Welcome to our Sunday service. My name is Lori Mickelson and I pastor the Northern Lights Christian Fellowship Church of the Nazarene here in Chetwin. We've been traveling through the writings of Paul over the last few months. Today we're going to revisit the final chapter of Ephesians and we find the help that we need to accomplish the tasks that God puts in our path. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. In Paul's day, that part of the world was at an uneasy peace. Now, it was a peace that was maintained by the Roman armies, but it was still just a measure of peace. The soldiers were equipped with the standard suit of armor, and Paul uses this description of the pieces of armor worn by the soldiers to demonstrate the spiritual armor that God has provided to stand against demonic forces that operate in the spiritual realm. Each portion of this armor stands for a spiritual truth. Paul lists these pieces of armor in the order that the soldier puts the armor on. But before we examine each piece of armor, we have to know what scheme of Satan that piece of armor is for. The enemy we cannot see doesn't play fair. Paul cautions the followers of Jesus to be determined and remain faithful. There is no way that we can stand firm against the devil and all his wiles on our own but God has gifted us with armor. We need to depend on God's strength and use every piece of that armor He has gifted us with. This armor is available to every believer in the body of Christ. So who are these not flesh and blood enemies? First of all, they're very real. They follow Satan and their only goal is to defeat Christ's church. They aren't going to bother us much if we don't believe in Christ but they go into action when we do and will use every device to turn us back to the life that we led before we met Him. This struggle against evil will continue until Christ returns. To defeat a supernatural foe, we must have supernatural power, and that power comes to us only through the Holy Spirit. We do have Jesus' promise to His followers, Upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Matthew 16, verse 8. So what is the armor of God? Ephesians 6, 13 to 17. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The Belt of Truth How many of you are plagued with feelings of inadequacy or feeling that your life is meaningless? Those are thoughts that come to our mind and they're usually baseless. This particular scheme uses the deep wounds inflicted by a world to warp and twist our self-image. As believers, we've been chosen and loved by the Father, redeemed and blessed by the Son, and empowered by the Holy Spirit. Every single human being in the world is wonderfully loved by God. Not all accept Him, but they were loved so much that He sent His Son to save us from sin. As believers, we've been adopted as God's dearly loved children. These lies that Satan uses against us are designed to confuse us and make us weak. Consider for a moment the first time this strategy was used in the Garden of Eden. God warned Adam and Eve against eating from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Yet Eve listened to the lies that Satan told her, and she wanted what Satan had promised, even though it was a lie. She was deceived. The lies are to confuse and entice us away from the truth. 
According to one research book on this portion of scripture, the Greek version says literally, stand having your gird, your, having girded your loins with truth. What the soldier girded himself with was a sturdy, tightly wrapped leather girdle that provide essential support to his core. As believers, we're not surprised that Paul says, stand firm with your loins girded with truth. When we've lived by God's word and wrap it tightly around us, we will have all the support we need. Being girded with truth is the first step in putting on God's armor and is key to wearing all the rest. The Breastplate of Righteousness In our studies over the past couple of months, we've seen just how difficult it is to walk in righteousness. We do have a new self, but the natural self we were born with still exists. Paul even stated that he has not yet made it, but when he stated Romans 7, 19, I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. We are a people at war within ourselves. Have you ever noticed that temptation is always directed at our old self? Now the Roman breastplate covered the chest of the soldier and protects the soldier's vital organs. Paul reminds his readers that the spiritual breastplate of the believer is righteousness. Old Testament saints were considered righteous when their personal behavior stood up to the standard of moral and ethical norms established by God. Now we all know that this sounds good, but we also know that only God is perfectly righteous. So how can we truly be righteous? Genesis 15:6 tells us Abraham believed the Lord and God credited it to him as righteousness. Yet we all know that Abraham was not perfect by any means. God wants a relationship with us that's based on faith and not on works or what we can do for him. This breastplate of righteousness that protects our vitals from the most deadly of Satan's tr thrusts helps us maintain a righteous lifestyle right here and right now. The future comes later. There is no mistake that the righteousness Paul writes about it is, we are called to live a life of love. Sandals of peace. Peace does not mean the absence of strife. It is not a truce between warring groups. Look at what Colossians 3, 12 to 15 says. As God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. A Roman soldier wore heavy military shoes that were half boot and half sandal. The sole was made of several layers, three quarters of an inch thick, and were studded with nails. These boots enabled the soldier to dig his feet into the ground and hold his position while fighting. Paul warns us that it is possible to stand against the enemy of our souls and still have the peace of God in our lives, no matter what our circumstances. It's so much easier to live a life filled with joy of the Lord and that peace that passes all understanding when we work hard to live at peace with others. The Shield of Faith. I had a discussion with a friend this week about faith. My mind took me to the saints in the Old Testament who trusted God no matter what. I thought about Noah and how he built the ark. It took him a hundred years and all that time he followed the Lord's directions. His faith believed that rain was coming because God said it would. His, his faith that God would release them from the ark when the time was right. When I'm sure he wondered when he was going to get out of that boat and be able to set the animals free. Or how about Moses? His faith led him back to Egypt to free the Israelites from bondage, even though he knew that his life would be in danger. He hadn't left Egypt on good terms. What did he think the first time he threw his staff on the ground and it turned into a serpent? Did he have any doubts? If any of them had any doubts, they set them to one side and did what God told them to do. They trusted God. Interestingly enough, Abraham's faith was considered righteousness to God in Romans 4, verse 3. 
For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Life and life's difficulties are thrown into our path. Satan wants us to panic and either rush ahead or turn away from the path God has chosen for us. Consider Abraham and Sarah. After years in the promised land with no children, they became anxious and discouraged. Filled with doubt and disappointment, Abraham did as Sarah suggested. The result was Ishmael, and that conflict between the Arabs and the Jews continues to this day. They panicked under pressure and failed to raise that shield that God provides for believers. Most of us have had experiences that shake our faith. What are we supposed to do? The shield of faith helps us foil those schemes. The helmet of salvation. The last piece of armor that the soldier puts on in Paul's day was the helmet. This helmet protected the complete head. What protects our hearts and minds from the first of Satan's schemes is an understanding of salvation itself. In Romans 12 verse 2, we're reminded, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. What Paul is saying in Ephesians is that our salvation provides a perspective that protects us from Satan's lies. Before we were born, God was involved in shaping us. Satan often uses the wounds inflicted by the world to embed lies in our minds to rob us of our joy in the person that God has formed us to be. But once again, we're reminded there is not one single soul on this planet that God wants to be lost to eternal life. The choice is theirs. He had a plan in place from the beginning of time to rescue us from sin. He sent his son to die for every one of us, and his son Jesus willingly gave himself to this precious plan. Even after Jesus ascended into heaven, he did not leave us without counsel. He sent the Holy Spirit to guide, protect, and teach us. The sword of the Spirit. And only when the entire armor of God is in place are we to take up the sword. The sword of the Spirit is God's word. In Scripture, we find our strength and direction. In Scripture, we find peace and comfort. It is no surprise that the lessons taught in Scripture are not always pleasant lessons. God's people failed many times. They learned how to repent and turn from their ways, and they learned how to trust God. These lessons still apply to us. We have been instructed to tell others about salvation. We have this textbook that we're to follow. Ephesians 6, verse 18. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere, and pray for me too. Ask God to give me the right words so I can boldly explain God's mysterious plan that the good news is for the Jews and the Gentiles alike. There's always times to, we can pray. We can make prayer a natural response all through the day as we come across events and situations that need it. They can be a brief, silent Oh, thank you for a beautiful morning. To a prayer of help, I'm in trouble here and I don't know what to do. You don't have to be isolated from others or from work to be praying constantly. Prayer becomes an attitude. Expect to meet God all throughout the day because he's there anyway. And Paul asked the church to pray for him as well. Even though Paul is under house arrest, he spent his time writing to various churches to encourage and teach them. He did not ask them to re be released from this prison he found himself in. He asked to pray for insight into how he could accomplish his mission in spite of those situations. I can certainly understand that after a year like this past year. The church has had to come up with a different way of presenting the gospel. And God is still using the circumstances and the people he has called to be his own to get his message out in spite of the circumstances. Now may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Numbers 6, 24 to 26.